So Josh and Erin, thank you very much for talking to us. Um, I watched all 10, all the episodes in one sitting because it's that good. Did you? Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. And actually, the drama of it is astonishing. And when you put it all down in, you know, obviously some of it's factual and some of it is, has got artistic license uh, attached to it. But this is a very dramatic set of lives here, isn't it, really? And we forget that, that, that our royal family have been through a lot, don't we? Yeah. They're yeah. fascinating people. They are. They're really fascinating. I mean, we, so, have, as a kind of um, society, we're clearly fascinated by them. Mm. But I think when you start to... When you start to humanise them, it's even more interesting. Yeah. You know, when you start to, like, take these sort of extraordinary circumstances that they live in and make them ordinary, it's quite, quite yeah. special, isn't it? Yeah, that's why I think we love the show. It's yeah. because, we, yeah, we want to know their flaws. We want to know their vulnerabilities. We want to know what they have for breakfast. Do you know what I mean? Like, that, that's fascinating because they're these kind of... They're behind glass, in a way, in reality, and this show is giving them a beating heart. Yeah. So when you were both approached to be Princess Anne and Prince Charles, your genuine first reaction, because you're playing living people and you probably have never seen yourself as Prince Charles and uh, as Prince Charles and as Princess Anne, I don't know. I mean, or, or have you often thought... Uh, oh, the ears. first thing I thought was, well, yeah. Oh, yeah, you've said, yeah. Because of my ears. No. Uh, they're not... Oh, I don't think they're as big, they're, are they? Also, they're, they're sort fine. of They're small, they just protrude, is what my mum used to reassure me with. Is that what you um, said? I don't know. That's what I imagine. Um, yeah. Uh, what was my first, what was your first thought? With, what, with once? Him? Hmm. I don't know. I'm, I was just excited. It sounds really cheesy and I don't know. I was genuinely just excited about the opportunity because I watched this show and I was like, oh my God. I just, just honestly, to be a part of it and to work with the people who, I think by that point it was, it was aware, like we were yeah. aware who was going to be on that show. I was just kind of like, okay, cool, let's, let's go for it. Yeah. And again, like I genuinely wanted to find out about this woman, and I can't, I fell in love with her. Like the more and more research I did, I was like, I'm really, really excited to portray this woman and for people to, to find out about her because I kind of didn't really know anything about her. And I think, yeah, I, I'm excited for people to meet her in a way. Did you have to do a lot of research? Because you're dealing with years when they weren't really that much in the public eye. Certainly Princess Anne mm. has maintained her privacy. Yeah. But um, we didn't really know an awful lot about what was going on in, in both of your characters' lives. Well, I think, uh, do you know what I think w was really helpful was in the first two series, I mean, you know, the previous cast w will have had even less kind of archival footage mm -hmm. and... You know, we had a bit more and it could just get more and more. But, um, you know, I think I think what's great about The Crown is that there's only, so, you know, we're not mimics, we're actors. And there's only so much you can do to sort of um, hint at the person that we know, the public perception of Prince yeah, Anne or Prince Charles. And then beyond that, we, we have license to create these characters. And so, you know, we, for myself, I, you know, I did a certain amount. We, we all worked with Polly Bennett, who did movement, and William Connor, who did dialect. And we kind of found little things that kind of hint at a kind of recognisable Prince Charles or recognisable yeah, Princess sure. Anne. But then you sort of drop it. And then the fun starts when you're creating something fictional and that's your own. Um, so there's only, uh, basically, there's only so much I think you can do. Yeah. Um, it, it's always strange when uh, actors are asked to portray people who are still living, let alone the most famous people in the world. So that that's an extra challenge, isn't it, really? Everybody has their own ideas about... Prince Charles and Princess Anne, don't they? Mm -hmm. And you know, it lead, that kind of leads on from your response because I think, yeah, there definitely, definitely came a point when you had to go, you know what, I can't, I physically can't be a creative person with all this pressure yeah. because I just, it would just get too much. Just thinking about people going, oh, but I would have said this or I think, I think this. So in a way, you kind of had to go, you know what, we're going to, we're in our own little bubble anyway to kind of film this thing. So let's just kind of, you have to accept that it's Peter Morgan's version of these people. And like, yeah, like you're saying, there's this artistic license to to create. Like, mm. they, they, we are actors. And I think, yeah, the moment those, I don't know, the pressure dropped away was the moment for me that I was like, okay, cool, I feel like an actor again now. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was freeing in a way to go, okay, yes, these are real people. 
but there was a release to go, you know what, it's not, I don't need to put that pressure on myself. I'm not trying to be Princess Anne. Yeah. This, and Princess Anne in particular, you, you'll no doubt know that um, a number of royal courtiers and experts have already said, that's not right, that's not right. Why are they showing that? Princess Anne in particular, a, a very liberated young woman as she's portrayed as. There we go. That's what I mean. I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm fully, I think you have to as an actor also be fully, fully prepared and accepting of people to have their own opinions mm. on these things. But at the same time, I really just feel a kind of removal from it because I went into it accepting the situation that it might not be everyone's image of these people. But what we are doing is Peter Morgan's version of these people. So, yeah, again, I kind of I, it doesn't. It's a straight, I think it's a strange thing that, that sort of, you know, when people ask about how, whether your views on that person has changed, yeah. I always say that, yeah, I feel a great kind of warmth and empathy for Prince Charles. But that's because that's our job is to, yeah. em to have empathy for these characters. And actually, if I watch it back, I, saw, I, don't, see, I don't see Prince Charles. I see them as, like, my character is a diff very much a different person to the royal Prince Charles you know it's it's a kind of strange thing where it's sort of you are dancing with fact and fiction mm -hmm. all the time on this show mm -hmm. and so there are liberties to be taken for you know the character basically is that something that you would say to people then is remember this is drama yeah yeah Absolutely. I think so I also think that does ha when you're watching it like you do accept that do you know what I mean like you've there you got a cup of tea you got some biscuits you're like okay cool I'm in for the night I'm watching a tv show and I think yeah I wonder if either of you got a sense, um, obviously this was drama, of what it can be like to live perpetually in the spotlight, which is the, you know, which is what our royal family do now, and some of them struggle against it, Meghan and Harry, as we've seen. Um, you've got a bit of a taste of it, perhaps, on set. And what are your, your views on the difficulty from what you've ascertained from being in the crown? Go on. I mean, I find it... <laughs> My first episode of, the ser of Series 3... Um, we see Charles go to Wales to learn the language. And there was one scene <clears throat> where he turns up at Aberystwyth University and there were like crowds of essays cheering against Charles, kind of a, kind of a, a sense of animosity. And it, I mean, I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> it's quite a strange thing to kind of feel hostility when you, you know, and that was just acting. So, you know, I imagine that the pressures are difficult, but this is this is what Peter's presenting in the show is is a um, is this kind of, you know, what that does to a human, what that does to a person. It's very easy to dehumanize these kind of extraordinary people when you start to introduce the aspects mm -hmm. of them being brothers and sisters yeah. and having relationships with their parents. You know, suddenly it kind of, I think it, is, it adds another dimension. I think that's why we have more respect or more understanding of these people. Is that they are human. Yeah. And this role has been thrust upon them. It's not, it hasn't been a choice, it's a duty, as we keep coming back to in the series. Yeah. So it's, um, I have great sympathy f for that, you know, that aspect of it. Certainly when you're playing those things, it's, yeah. quite, it's quite hard actually. It know, really feeling is. That pressure yeah and you kind of you find yourself you come home and you know I mean you close the door and you genuinely are grateful to not be in yeah. their shoes that's yeah. kind of ultimately the feeling it's like gosh I'm really really I'm really really glad it's not me because it just seems like the most intense situation to constantly wake up and find yourself in and, and it's interesting the ages of your character uh, characters in this this is before you know social media and 24 hours a day cameras so this is when the heat is not really on in terms of constant onslaught of cameras and people poking their noses into your business so this is the car before the storm really isn't it for Anne and Charles yeah, yeah. it's a different time isn't it I yeah guess. yeah it's weird to look the other day I was shooting a scene and I was thinking where would his mobile phone and then I thought that's ridiculous it's funny isn't didn't it have yeah. Mobile phone. yeah certainly didn't have Instagram <laughs> Um, <laughs> it, but it, you're right. It's a different. They commu They communicate in different ways, and it's um, yeah. And I think that's where we were saying. Like, I think that's where the beauty of their relationship is born from because they have each other. Like they, that's who they're talking to. That's who they're going. What do you think about this? What do you think about this? They're, yeah. That's what they're doing. Yeah. You, you certainly have a tremendous amount of sympathy for your characters. There's no doubt about that. That's what came over to me watching it. 
Um, it was a really sympathetic portrayal. And actually, we felt sorry. I mean, Princess Anne's a strong character, isn't she? I yeah. do hope all that stuff was true because, <laughs> um, you know, why shouldn't she be a strong, independent woman? Mm. Why yeah. shouldn't she? But we do really feel for Charles. We just, we just do. It, it was, it's hard, and we know some of that is true. Yeah, I think. I mean, ultimately, that's um, that. That was our aim. You know, we're we're telling a we're telling a you know a profound kind of conflict for, for Prince Charles that essentially, you know, he's the, the he's in waiting constantly, you know, and. And the, the ultimate conflict that he experiences is that he's not, he's not just in waiting, he's in waiting for his mother to die, for his life to take meaning. And I think that's a kind of yeah, so epic heavy. question, epic sort of weight on his shoulders. Um, so I always felt like, yeah, I felt like that was the sort of the crux of everything with him. Um, and yeah, he, I feel sorry for him, for sure. Yeah. Um, and what yeah. do you make of the kind of suggestion that the Queen had a very close friendship with um, Porchy, her racing manager, which has incensed many <laughs> in the royal circles. <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, that's <laughs> it. I'm kind of like, oh, fuck. Yeah. I mean, it's, I'd, first of all, I prob I actually don't know. <laughs> no, genuinely, that, and that's but, um, it. That's what I mean. Like, we're coming yeah. at it from the same situation as everyone, as everyone else, else, really. Yeah, yeah. And I think, again, like with everything on this show, the only things we actually know are the things that happened in the public eye. That's what's so brilliant about The Crown is that yeah. we are speculating, we are fictionalising the things that happen behind the closed doors. So who knows? But, uh, you know, I think that aspect's a lovely part of the, st of the narrative of the sh show. So wh okay. whether it exists in real life, it exists in the show and it's lovely. So. Yeah. so and we've got Camilla, Andrew Parker Bowles, and we've got Dana waiting in the wings on series four. That's right, isn't it? So... You know, this is this is a drama that is going to continue to engage people even more because we do know a lot more. We think about stuff to come, don't we? Certainly, the Diana Camilla mm. triangle or quadrangle involving <laughs> Anne as well. So that was quite interesting and probably true, I think, as well. Like, Again, like we're like so yeah. we have what we have to yeah. go on is the facts, and then Peter Morgan does his thing. But I mean, it's yeah, that it is based upon what we know. But I think what's brilliant about Peter's writing is that he kind of in a way he gathers all these headlines in a way of what he knows everyone has seen and mm -hmm. everyone is talking about and then he puts it in the bin and he goes right let's talk about the things that people don't know because yeah. that's why it's so good is I would, honestly for the first two series I was like googling all these events that I had no <laughs> clue about I was like oh my god I can't believe this happened this happened this happened and I think he does the same thing I, th I think he does it really well yeah. for these, for have, these you, seasons. have you started filming the bits with Diana yeah we're so we're midway through well, quite early stages still yeah. season four which is great but as you say you know it's it's so cool what i loved about series one and two is as you say is we all know what happens mm -hmm. right in the kind of the grand scheme of things we know the kind of the big bullet points of this story so it's all i always think it's quite nice when we introduce camilla you go okay well we know sort of the history we know a little bit of the history of that we know where we're gonna end up with it um and go right back to sort of um, the Margaret storyline with um, with Snowden and, and all that stuff from series one and two, mm. you know, and continued through this. There are there are things that Peter's highlighting that kind of come back to haunt the mm -hmm. family. And yeah. So all that stuff is great. You know, it's so compelling, isn't it? Yeah. The whole story is so compelling. I can envisage a day when you are going to meet Princess Anne and you are going to meet Prince Charles on a, on a carpet somewhere. I hope so. How do you imagine that encounter will be? <laughs> I'd love it. Honestly, yeah, I'd love it. love it. I just want to be in like her presence. It sounds like a proper fangirl statement, mm. but I genuinely <laughs> do. I just, because you spend like years like researching these people and like living in their skin in a way. I think I just I'd love to just like stand opposite her. It sounds so weird, but I just kind of want to be next to her cuz I've just spent so much time thinking about the way she thinks. I'd love to just see if I got it right in a way. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I just, just want to know. I'd love to give him a little handshake. That's you do, it. Is that what you do? Handshake, bow? Yeah. Oh, handshake. yeah. There's probably many yeah. a rule. I'd probably get it wrong. I would. That's <laughs> it. Wrong. And that's I it. Always, and that's what I people would say. I always wonder if Charles, if Charles had an outer body experience and had to meet himself, I bet he'd get it wrong. Yeah. yeah. I feel like, come so on. I'm not that bothered. <laughs> no. I would do my best to get it right. <laughs> They're both very cool and very lovely, actually. So, you know. Amazing. Good, oh, to hear, good to hear. Um, just one thing to ask you, um, Josh. It's actually Prince Charles's birthday tomorrow. 
Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Apparently. I mean, obviously, I knew that. Yeah, obviously, you knew that. I've sent him a card. Good. There we go. <laughs> Send the post.